Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney. Thanks for joining us today. We're here at the Cowboy Church to talk about disciplines for worship ministry. And by that, I mean, what are the things that are important for people on the worship team to be paying attention to and doing? Now, these disciplines were prayerfully uh, determined for this specific worship team, and I don't intend them to be legalisms for every worship team everywhere, but prayerfully consider uh, these disciplines for worship ministry and decide what might be applicable on your own worship team or as, <clears throat> or as you develop uh, the worship ministry that God has called you to. Uh, first and foremost is being a disciple. We don't want people up here on the stage leading worship who aren't following Jesus, who haven't made profession of faith, who haven't uh, made a commitment to follow the Lord. And uh, some of those disciplines, and keep in mind that the root word of disciple is discipline, some of the disciplines of uh, being a disciple are reading the Bible and prayer. We want the people who are on the stage because Singing and worship ministry, it is a word ministry. And we want people in their Bible setting a good example. We want them to have active prayer lives, actively in communion and communication with God as their Lord and Master. We want people on the worship team to be worshiping in private. Uh, worship ministry is hard work. You can't arrive at church on Sunday morning to lead worship with an empty tank, spiritually speaking. It's not going to be productive. You can't arrive at the midweek meeting with an empty tank if you're going to come up on the stage and be trying to lead others and get others into the throne room of God. People need to be worshiping privately so that when you get up here and you're doing it in front of people, it comes out of the overflow. Think of it this way, how effective is a pastor or teacher going to be if the only time they crack the Bible is when they're standing in front of people to teach or to preach? In the same way for uh, the worship team to be worshiping out of an overflow of their hearts on Sunday morning or whatever day it happens to be, they need to have a discipline of worshiping privately singing, make it music in their hearts to the Lord, uh, sing along with the radio when you're driving, if it's a Christian radio station, uh, you can uh, also, you can double dip time-wise with your worship ministry and your practice of private worship, as well as the practice of the musicianship, practicing Christian songs and proving your musicianship. Now, one of the distinctives about our worship team is that we value the spiritual side of things more than we value technical perfection. Our goal is not perfection in terms of musicality. A lot of our worship team members probably aren't talented enough to appear on The Voice or on one of the TV shows or to be professional musicians. Uh, but we do want to be improving and growing in our musical skills. So we ask worship team members to practice, uh, if they're vocalists, to practice vocals, if they're instrumentalists, to practice their instrument, three hours a week as a discipline so that they can be steadily improving. And if they're worshiping privately at the same time, uh, that's all the better. Submission is an important discipline or a member of the worship team. Now, it's not just submission to the instructions that come through the worship team, but as applicable, people need to be submitted to the church leadership and eldership. Our wives need to be submitted to their husbands. Children need to be submitted to their parents. Everybody needs to be submitted to the governing authorities. People who have employers within the context of their job need to be submitted to their employers. You know, if, if, if somebody's cheating on their taxes or robbing their employer, or if a child is in rebellion 
open, ongoing, unrepentant rebellion against their parents about whatever the issue may be, then this is not the place of discipleship where we want people standing on the stage leading worship uh, as an example to others in the congregation. We also want musicians to be working to blend musically with the other musicians. Uh, this is not a opportunity to show your stuff and to, to stand out, to show what you got, you know, on the drums or on the guitar solos or um, to show that you're the best vocalist on the team. Um, we want to have a cohesive whole in the worship songs and we're not going to be perfect musically but we don't want to be in the way of the congregation's worship we want god to be the central focus of the worship experience not the individual musicians all right we also want to ensure and it takes some discipline to do this the vocalists have to do this the instrument the instruments have to do this the sound man has an important role to ensure that the vocals are audible and understandable primarily the the message that goes to the hearts and then from the hearts of the congregation up to the lord through worship are the words that are being sang and spoken so we want to ensure that the vocals are audible and understandable All right. there's also some disciplines of appearance now i don't want to overemphasize appearance we know from scripture that man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So 90 plus percent of our disciplines for worship ministry are concerned with the heart. But we also know that people are coming in from the outside and that man looks out of the, at the outward appearance. We don't want our appearance to be a distraction or to get in the way of the congregation entering into worship. Now, here at the Cowboy Church, we're a come at you, come as you are kind of church. So I've actually asked some worship team members to dress a little less formally because I don't want guests or people in the congregation to think, well, I'm not dressed well enough for church. We want people to look at the worship team and feel like they fit in feel like they're comfortable. So here at the Cowboy Church, we want rednecks to feel welcome. Some members of the worship team will wear a, a cowboy hat. These are usually legitimate uh, cowboys who have made or make their living uh, working with cattle. Now, for me, that's not really a genuine enough appearance, so I try and help uh, rednecks feel welcome by you know, wearing my one of my best fishing shirts uh, when I lead worship or something along those lines. Um, other churches may have other priorities from the leadership regarding appearance. Uh, if there's instructions, some might be completely fine with, you know, torn blue jeans because there are people in the congregation or people they're hoping to reach for whom torn blue jeans might be an appealing feature. Uh, there might be other worship teams and leaders that say, well, jeans are okay, but I don't want any holes in the blue jeans. Follow those instructions. There may be other worship teams that require a little more formal dress, maybe not wearing jeans, maybe wearing dress shoes, maybe even wearing ties. Um, there are appearance disciplines that will vary from one worship team to another, and that's okay, but they need to be in alignment with what the church leadership wants and with what the goals of the church happen to be. Here at the Cowboy Church, one of our goals is to reach the unchurched, to reach the rednecks and the cowboys and the people who are interested in Western heritage culture. So we adjust our appearance accordingly. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Courtney.